Hello and welcome to episode 53 of Detroit Comics Party. I can't believe we've lived this long. Uh, <laughs> today we have a very, very special guest in the studio with us today, Mr. Nate McDonough. Hello, how is everyone? <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to respond via the medium of your choice. <laughs> I'm dying to find out, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. Thank you very much for being here. It's a true pleasure. Yeah, at last. At I'm, I'm, de- I'm delighted. I am delighted to be here. This is very nice. <laughs> well, do you want? We, should we introduce you? The greatest living comics artist of our generation, at least. I agree. <laughs> I'm extremely good at basketball, and I'm a certified Reiki healer, also. <laughs> how did how did you come to be trained in the healing arts? Uh, I went I went to a, a special academy for it for maybe like nine years. Maybe <laughs> super advanced methods that I mean I don't even really know how much time we have here, and I get the sense that you guys aren't even really interested in Reiki, <laughs> but. I'm more than happy to get into it I'm if sorry you're serious if we about give it. You that impression. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in all reality, you are one of our most oldest comics friends who we treasure above many. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, you're the master of all Pittsburgh land. Oh, man. You boys are very sweet. I, <laughs> I treasure you guys too. And I've known you since Mike walked with a cane. Yeah. <laughs> or, we were uh, just trying to figure out how long ago that was. Benjamin <laughs> button <ass> man. <laughs> oh. Six years? Something? I think I was looking through my um I was looking through my messages with you on f- Facebook. We keep talking about Facebook. Uh-uh. Mm, uh-uh. <laughs> but uh, I, like, scrolled up, and it took me one thumb swipe, yeah. and it went all the way back to 2013. Nice. And I realized we still had not exchanged phone numbers. Are you ever about to, like, <laughs> are you ever about to send somebody a message on Facebook, but you see the last thing you sent them was seven years ago, and you're completely or embarrassed by really what that is? it really fucked up. Yeah, right, exactly. You're like, ah, yeah. ah never mind. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. Like, I'm not going to send them this you're link. Like, <laughs> as soon as they see this one, they're going to see the other one that was, like, yeah. the last. <laughs> That's one that either I sent or they sent, which will remind them that we shouldn't be speaking to each other. Uh, I don't know. I would. I want people to get an idea of like this, you know, utopia of Pittsburgh that you have, where it's like when you took us there, it was like we're we're just gonna take the day going to independent bookshops, and they'll buy your books and sell them. And there's more than one, and they don't just kick you out immediately. Well, yeah, but then it was funny because I remember when, when, we, when we went to a, a single record shop in the middle of a bunch of bookshops, they were absolutely fucking disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> we were Which we were like, this, okay, I thought we were like tripping or something. Like, this feels a little bit more normal. <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely sickened at the suggestion of you of even comics. Of you leaving something there and then <laughs> walking away from it. Just what every store is in business for. It's like, can you leave something here and I'll give you money? <laughs> But you've got all kinds of cool, like, stores. You have, um... Yeah, what's I, the one really cool one? I'm, Copacetic. I'm particularly fond of Copacetic Comics, and I, I'm I'm down there typically once a week, and my buddy Bill Boyshell runs the shop, and he's run a couple different comic shops before Copacetic, and uh-huh. Copacetic has been in a couple different places, but right now it's in Polish Hill. It's on the third floor of this very cool building. It's got this incredible balcony with this gorgeous view of the city that people are just invited to hang out on, and... I feel like I was I was just like hanging out there one day a week just watching the shop for Bill because he's my boy, and I remember there were these crust punks who would come up, and they would just sit out on the, and they would complain about their dishwashing jobs, <laughs> just in this like profane, furious detail at the top of their <laughs> lungs, and they would just chain smoke cigarettes, and I just remember uh, like the the time that I walked by, and I said, "Hey man, how's it going?" And just like one of them was out there just smoking a cigarette by himself, and he went. Just another day, man. 
<laughs> and I, I felt how uh, old was this crust punk? <laughs> somewhere between seventeen and forty two. Like you just can't fucking tell. But like, like I felt like such like deep hatred in my heart for him. But anyways, back to Copacetic. It's a wonderful bookshop that is not always burdened by a crust punk in the immediate vicinity. And burdened. <laughs> the, the the gentleman who runs it went through great trouble to make it into a very cool place. And I I, I find that it's a very comforting environment to be in I, i've i have taken so much from it literally figuratively and otherwise and it's a great place but pittsburgh is a wonderful place and copacetic it, in particular is my temple but it totally is as someone who feels comfort almost <laughs> never as a fan <laughs> that was of like the, that was pretty close yeah. to feeling it when we were there <laughs> it's so weird to go to visit you and it because i it's like another world Compared well, to what I see. Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, but I mean, naturally, I've just had my mind completely annihilated today <laughs> by being in Detroit properly for the first time. Where when I was, I was, oh God, it's like, I hope she never sees this. But when I was in high school, I dated uh, a very nice girl uh, who lived. <laughs> you can tell the story's going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll keep it to the bare minimum. But uh, I, I was in Detroit several times, but I never saw anything of it except for like a very minute fraction of the suburbs. Uh -huh. And then I came here for Detroit Comics Party last year, but that was strictly me driving in a death trap vehicle. Just like white knuckling it, just like fucking pissed off about four different things. And like, <laughs> but this year it was just like cruising around on a bike on a beautiful day. And then we just go from the popsicle shop to the yeah. cookie shop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, well, this is great. And it's like, why don't I always do this? They come down and visit me every single year. So I, <laughs> I suppose it's about time that I did this Detroit thing. But I, I'm going to do my best to make it an annual tradition. Excellent. And, uh, and I'm feeling bad. Oh, but it's like, you know, I feel like we're getting very far off topic. But like, no. We're not. <laughs> it's like, it's like, Jeff, Jeff wants me to come back for the, the tubing trip, which sounds great. Oh, God. <laughs> How do I say no to a tubing trip? You're... It sounds wonderful. It's yeah. Like, it's heaven up here. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> I'm just glad to be back in my right mind, though, because I feel like I've just been, like, crawling on all fours out of my mind at... Are you various burdened? points over the course of the day? Oh, during today. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, mostly just alcohol related. Like nothing, <laughs> nothing to worry about. Nothing serious, you know. Just like being. Uh, <laughs> it's not diabetes from eating all those fucking cookies. <laughs> I, did, I did eat a chero that was about a foot and a half long in less than twenty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you came up to the guy to buy it with the butt of it in your finger. It's no, like sure. this is what it used to be. <laughs> in my entire life, I've only ever known those just like flavorless Taco Bell churro crisp mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. uh -huh. that are awful. <laughs> that are so bad, and it's like you instantly regret eating them as soon as you bite into it. But You're I mean, just trying to trigger a memory of a real churro <laughs> by eating yeah, those, I feel like. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. The first time we came to visit you, like, I feel like we were mean and insane. Yeah. And... No, Mike, Mike was you're... even insane. You were a complete sweetheart, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mike, Mike was just like hell bent on annihilating everything in his path, and you, and you were very like neatly mending everything in his oh, way. Oh no! And it was a very charming dynamic. It was just, like it was wonderful to see because I mean, like we were all immediately big fans of Mike, and everyone liked him a lot. But then, like, <laughs> except for Max, who was scared to death of him. Because <laughs> <laughs> what I liked about it too was just like my roommates are coming home one at a time, and like, as uh, they they arrive, yeah. Mike has them like so frightened they're considering leaving the house they live in. <laughs> but, but then you would just like, like, hello, I'm Kevin. How are you? And how was your day? That's so nice. And you would ask them like a very like astute question. <laughs> was like, Which was the one of the roommates that came home while we were burning fake money on your floor inside? <laughs> his, his name is Max Wheeler. He's oh, my that's why he was buddy. He, he'd been away for several, for like a month and a half working a miserable, just like I work 16 hours away a yeah. day on, a, on the road type of job. And he came back and I remember hugging him and you could feel that the warmth like the, the warmth of his, the human body was absent <laughs> <laughs> it seems like your roommates are always getting back from working some like just crushingly difficult job where they had been like away from human contact like, for and, months and dead behind the eyes yeah. not only is they 
trash and hell money burning on the floor, but they were just <laughs> empty, stacked up. And I think Mike had just taken it upon himself to take the speaker that was playing 3 6 Mafia and turn it around so that it was playing out the window into the street. <laughs> <laughs> You want to waste in it my on the indoors. <laughs> I, I felt like we were all making mayhem at once. Oh, I, I agree yeah, completely. I, think, I, 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 I don't want to make it sound right. like Mike was being... <laughs> Mike was anomalously misbehaving and we were all angry at him. It was very good. <laughs> it was very, very good. <laughs> oh, my God. But you're, like, you're hospitality and like overall just like city of people who are so nice and kind and and wonderful who is just like what it was amazing yeah man Pittsburgh's and great and you get every time we go there it's so much fun and we have such a good time everyone should go there i keep telling people about pittsburgh like that it's so fun and good and such a nice place to be that's but I don't I, know if it's true or not. It's just like you went like yeah. bike riding with with us, and it's like it's like yeah, that's one thing. Well, to make it like extremely pretentious, it's like any interview where the result can be like any one of an infinite number of results. Where like you know, I'm sure we could go to any goddamn miserable city with a population of more than a hundred thousand and luck upon the best possible course through it. Sure. Several times over, but, like, you know, disaster awaits around every corner pretty much everywhere you go. <laughs> I, I don't even know what I'm driving at right now. <laughs> Do you, can you, I mean, of all episodes, I feel like we should talk about comics a little bit. Yeah. In I would, this I would one, because yeah. you, like, you really are, like, a great and prolific producer of, like, very high-quality work. Thank you so like, much. all the time. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, do you want to just tell us about a couple of the things? I mean, you have uh, Grixley, which is on number, what are you on, like 40-something? Yeah. Oh, my God. Which, you put that out every day? <laughs> the, fir- the first year that, uh, that I did it, I uh, would publish one 20-page comic every single month. And they were uniformly pretty bad. Like, there's, like, some stuff that I still, like, gives me a chuckle, but, like, that's, like, kind of what helped me clear a bar of competency. And then uh, since then, just like whenever I get to about an issue's worth of miscellaneous, or sometimes I'll do like an issue that's like a complete story or focuses on a single subject. And and you're releasing stuff in the meantime, like on Tumblr and oh, yeah, like online. sharing I, it I, along the way and stuff. I do just about every day put a draw like a drawing of something or like a four panel strip out. Uh, I I've been having a very good time on the road since I just left Pittsburgh a couple days ago because I uh, forgot to bring my phone charger. And I left my iPad back there, and I didn't bring a computer. So I just had, like, no communication whatsoever electronically. Yeah. And it's been a great delight to me, but uh, <laughs> I, I am otherwise posting very regularly the, the things that I am completing. And I, I started a, a full-time job a couple years ago, and I figured that would be, like, you know, well, perhaps this is it for comics. And I, <laughs> I finished a book called Nap Time shortly before I started that job. And I, was I love Nap Time. Extremely proud mm-hmm. of it. And it's just like, this will have to be my grand finale. And like, just in case I fuck up and never do comics again, like this is what I'll have. And But then I had no trouble continuing to draw comics after I started working a regular job. I don't picture you ever stopping or having a problem. For, for sure. And it's like, I feel like in the last 10 years, it's gone from being like, this is a thing that I wish I could do to a thing that I'm getting better at to this affliction that I have where like I have to, like, affliction, just fuck affliction. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, but it was a problem where I just like, I'm not able to, extract the pleasure from life in a way that any normal person should be able to and then it was just like oh no wait like i can still like water is still wet and the sky is still blue and like i don't have to constantly be ruining my eyesight on a piece of paper no matter where i go and have kind of swung the pendulum back to a pleasing central point of just like i work regularly but i'm not destroying myself with it that's so good. I'm so <laughs> jealous of you. <laughs> well, because I was jealous, too, of people who drew way more than I did when I was a kid. Well, and I mean, like, and I do that now because I'm 30, where it's just like, oh, you're, you're 22. <laughs> kid. <laughs> Dude, great job, just kid. <laughs> like, yeah, like, yeah. yeah but I mean, but, like, I, you know, I, 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 I would see people who would even be, like, a year older than me, and they draw constantly. And it's some type of, like, 
acid casualty result, like graphomania, <laughs> like filling sketchbook after another with like mouth agape and just like eyes riveted, unblinking. And but I would see that and it'd just be like, if only I could be more like them. They're just so <laughs> prolific, and it's just like <laughs> prolific is like it's such a neutral term to me now, where it's just like not an insult. But it not doesn't a mean anything in yeah, itself. Yeah, exactly. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and I'm always introduced as like being like the prolific comic artist. It's like, God fucking damn it. <laughs> like, do you have any other adjective for me? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, I got, I got in so much trouble one time for saying fuck on local access when I was just like back when I was like 15, 16 years old. Yeah. And I was complaining about my job at the pizza place I was working at. <laughs> and I mean, I'm sure it was just dismal television or dismal entertainment of any kind, but it's just, it's coming back to me real hard right now. Oh, like flashing back big time. <laughs> yeah. Cause I was like talking with this guy whose dad was a cop. So it was like, just like cops were extra angry at me after that. <laughs> but I, I didn't have a very rough time of it. Cause I was like a white boy who lived in rural Wisconsin. So like, but my, my arch nemesis when I was in high school ended up being the school police liaison. It would probably be smart not to give his name, but like... <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to anyway. <laughs> no, but I, I, I will give you absolutely, like, it can only be one person in the entire world because he also happened to be an Elvis impersonator. Nice. So he was the cop who was always at my school who even had, like, the Elvis hair when he was in. And oh, he would just do everything that he could to try and, like foil me or catch me or bust me <laughs> and he even like pulled my mom over when he saw her and it's just like what and, and dude one time he told my mom your son will never graduate from watertown high school oh my <laughs> God. i got good grades man <laughs> I, I didn't get it i don't know like, where that came what? from Take that. i yeah. need you i got good grades and i'm out <laughs> i'm away from you now <laughs> oh. <laughs> we can talk about comic sports all right though <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about your Blue Lives comic? Yeah. that seems like a good t- t- linkage of words. I feel like there there are a lot of things that I wanted to accomplish with the next book that I did where I feel like it's uh, it's such a pleasure when you see... Because uh, when, I, when I grew up, I'd read all these X-Men comics or Spider-Man comics, and they're the serial. And there's the pleasure of just like, oh, look at all these great characters and this high-flying action, but then just like what's this one subplot about J. Jonah Jameson's half-brother's wife? And like, <laughs> like, why is Wolverine's clone in love with Psylocke? And it's just like, I fucking can't keep track of any of this. And I, <laughs> so I just, I thought about a lot when I was a kid, just like a discrete unit of comic that you could just enjoy from beginning to end and it would satisfy you. And what I wanted to do was not just like a thing that like each chapter is satisfying, but each page is satisfying. And I'm still working toward making each panel satisfying, but I wanted to, it's just four panel stories and I'm, I'm trying to do a hundred right now. I'm, I've written the whole thing. I'm adding a chapter here and there and I've done about 40 of them and I'm putting them up every other day, but they're just about these two cops and it's this nuclear blasted hellscape and these cops, they're both about a foot tall and... <laughs> The I o- thought it was just a giant <laughs> roller skate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It, it's not important, but, like, I put the skull in there, too, and, like, the skull is this about the same size as the roller skate, but, like, it's one of those things where you can't ever get mad at people for, like, not understanding something you were attempting to convey visually in a comic, where it's just, like, I'm just not Mobius. Like, uh, I guess I'm just not that I'm good. I'm sorry. Like, I just thought, like, I figured in this, like, nuclear post-apocalyptic like a scape, mutant roller like, skate. that there was, like, giants. And there had been, like, there was a giant skull to, to be fair, and a giant roller there's, skate. There's no context given outside of here's a skull, here's a roller skate, here are two cops. But What I'm th- saying is I'd rather talk about my wrong understanding <laughs> of your comic than the real thing. I'm just, okay, the, the, please, go on. The cops, they're, they're, there's two of them. They're the only life that is on the planet so far as we know. They only have each other. They found each other by surprise. Um, one of them is more of a just classic idiot cop because cops are bad and I feel like I wonder how many people hear like oh he does a comic about cops he does a comic called Blue Lives it's just like they instantly assume that 
I like cops or advocate on their behalf or are like interested in them as three dimensional. That'll get them to open up that <laughs> little book. <laughs> and God damn it, I was really hoping that people would be threatening my life by this point. <laughs> I'd be so mad about You're it. Like, but, come on. But out of the two cops, though, there is one who is um, a classic Keystone idiot bumbling cop, and the other one is more of this modern Blue Lives Matter, thin blue line. Uh, we are hyper the thin, militarized, hi, super aggro, just like wounded martyr type. Because it's just like there's like the I mean I, I feel like and a lot of why I'm doing it is just like whenever people bring up how awful cops are, I'm usually just silent because I don't want to get started. Because it's just like who wants to hear me speak for 20 minutes about how much I hate cops when I could just spend a year <laughs> drawing a comic that takes 20 minutes to read about just why comics go, are Here, horrible. Take this. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Right. But, the, uh, and then the, uh, I feel like as the episodes go by, you're not quite picking up on it, but if you're following them from one to the next, you can see that this other, this cop who's just like super aggro and extremely angry and like has difficulty grappling with simple emotions and explaining simple feelings. He, he kind of has uh, this like desire that he's for this, this other cop, this smaller cop, this cop number one, who, that he's sublimating into violence and, and just like this like angry, just like tirades and then uh, they uh, they kind of have this like where I'm at right now in the comic, and we don't we won't have to talk any further about the plot than this. But they're kind of splitting up right now, where cop number one has been so badly abused by cop number two that they can't even really associate with one another anymore. So uh-huh. they're, they're living in separate wrecked domiciles that are just nothing but like splintered wood, <laughs> just like away from one another. Uh huh. But. Uh, I feel like you did like you did a really good job with those like taking those stereotypes and like but I actually like look at them I'm like oh this guy he just wants a friend like he, wa- <laughs> he wants to be better friends with the other one but he's always displeased <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know I love it's, your caps it's kind of a beautiful ro- romance tale to, yeah. to me I think uh-huh because, I mean, I thought, like, when I started off, though, I, like, I couldn't help but do it where, like, I, I made them distinct characters. But originally yeah. it was going to be just, like, as absolutely two-dimensional as possible. Cops are rapists and murderers and they're pigs and they're monsters. And, like, you know, we all know that this is pretty much uniformly true with perhaps an exception here and there. <laughs> Which is all I'm prepared to see, but <laughs> <laughs> I changed your graphic to just say "Blue Lives Matter" under your name. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> I, I wonder, like the, <clears throat> and you know, you do that where you you can't help but imagine every single text message and uh, conversation over the phone, and televised interview a uh, death threat <laughs> yeah and, and, and threat against uh, every single police officer in america where like <laughs> it's like and then at some point in the future where uh you are sat before a humorless tribunal and you must explain all of it yeah yeah <laughs> so <it's> like, like, <laughs> so, and like you're in like the very first like uh blue line like media review tribunal like where like they passed that law and it's like it's up to you to like defend your work <laughs> I can see you there I think you would have fun <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the, so, speaking of tribunals there's this uh, speaking uh, of fun tribunals well like, like, like I became deeply preoccupied with this toy that this guy had on his front porch uh-huh. where it was uh, they, they each had this kind of like lectern thing but it was a dog a cat and a duck and they're just like these bright primary colors but there's like you like press a button that's like at the base of them I wish I had it handy or like even like a rough drawing it's of like it, a but, like, game it, it's like a children's like play school toy where like, you press the big button and it makes the sound but the but, animals are at podiums yeah they're at podiums okay. and, it's just, like, and like so like we would walk by it all the time and we called it the tribunal and it was <laughs> sitting on this like the porch of this house that didn't have like a, a, no children and evidence anywhere near <laughs> and just like trash was just like, gradually accumulating in heaps on the porch and I'm, I'm, I am here tonight speaking to you all to let you know that I, after years of observing this toy, walked across the lawn and stole it. 
It to this day resides in my old apartment on Mount Washington. <laughs> And it is still re- it recognizes the tribunal. <laughs> Do you like the, put it up like when someone's on high trial? Van- well, no, it's yeah. in a very high vantage though. So like, <laughs> you know that they have like this like mastery over you when you walk by. <laughs> 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 is it supposed to be like those animals that have like the eyes, like hiding the eyes and the ears and the? They're always watching though. They're not afraid to speak, and they are listening to everything. <laughs> <laughs> this group advocates full knowledge, and full transparency at all times. But like, it's like it's like whenever I do imagine the humorless tribunal in the future, just like parsing my every word and deed. It, it's always them in my mind's eye. Those <laughs> animals, it's like dourly staring down at me from hundreds of feet in the air. <laughs> Like the fear and loathing in Las Vegas judge. You guys too, room. right? Huh? You guys too, right? What, animal imagine tribunal? You guys, you guys imagine the exact same thing constantly, right? It's ubiquitous in your in your thoughts at all times. There's just one, and it's God, but yeah. <laughs> what kind Similar. of animal is God in your imagination? <laughs> this is just big bearded man, old white guy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember... I remember, like, I, I remember just, like, being a kid and having to do all the Catholic stuff where, like, mom would, like, intermittently just kind of, like, nudge us into it and we'd get bored or we'd get, like, resentful and angry and she'd withdraw us from it. And, yeah. Or, like, but then, uh, they, uh, one of the time, one time we were tasked with drawing God and we all just sat around drawing the shittiest gods ever. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's just like, and now it's, like, one of those things that I would pay, like, a hundred dollars to get to see, that like, drawing. Or, like, to see, like, the... Because I'm, I'm just a sick, sick man now. To see what, like, any group of children, like, manages, like, when they put their brains together, like, what shitty, like, visions of God they have, like... <laughs> <laughs> gonna go volunteer at the church and like organize the Sunday school to- curriculum. Yeah. Right, yeah. And I think like that would probably really tickle me tremendously where like I just like I dress nicely and I'm extremely polite to everyone, but just like gui- guide children through like successive acts of blasphemism, like each more profane than the one before. <laughs> but then it's just like, no, they're just drawing God now. It's wonderful. Like it's just like good idolatry we- check. <laughs> you're gonna, add, you're gonna <laughs> add their like insane drawing of God to like the felt board of like Bible stories and stuff and then like work it into the next lesson. (laughs) So which church do you work at? (laughs) I, oh man, I, um, (sighs) I'm a, I'm mostly down with Reiki nowadays. <laughs> it's hugely important to me. <laughs> it's unusually important to you. <laughs> this morning I drank half a bottle of gin, and then I worked really hard with Jeff to drink an entire case of Strohs. <laughs> you had put, a rough day. But then I put a healing uh, field about myself, and as you can see, it's working very well. <laughs> a, heal- a healing, a healing fajita around yourself. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, I'm so, so happy that we got to have you on today. It was a treat. That was already 30 minutes. So. God damn <laughs> Yeah. So um, goodbye to everyone at home in the ceiling, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank Thanks you guys for so watching. much. Yay. Bye. <laughs>